Number seven, GoDaddy.com Chevrolet. This is um, a bit of a homecoming for you. Talk a little bit about um, being in your home um, hometown and what it's like to sleep in. Oh, is it? Sorry. To sleep in your own bed at night. Oh, I see now. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's why I know how to take those things off. They're never the right height for me either. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, came here at the end of last year um, in the nationwide car and, and, and back here again. So um, we kind of more know more where to start with the car and or we're trying something different. <laughs> so uh, first practice was okay. We kind of, um, you know, I think the st car started out pretty decent. And um, then we kind of got a, w well, the track changed. Actually, I really think the track changed a lot and it picked up enough grip where, you know, we just started to push more and more as the session went on, and um, so it was about hurrying up and keeping w keeping up with that, so that you can keep the car free enough to be fast. And um, so we uh, we were kind of fighting that, but uh, I think we have an idea of where to go for for the next practice. And um, you know, Eric was running really well, my teammate, so it'll be good to rely on him for a little bit of advice on what worked for him and go into the second practice. But uh, it's good to be back here in Phoenix. Uh, I don't know if I can really call it back when I live here. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, oddly enough, it probably takes me, well, it takes me a lot more time to get to the track when I, at a local race than it does when I'm staying in my bus. It takes me about an hour or so. Um, but at any event, it's good to be home after the race. And um, I actually just heard on the broadcast that the track is getting repaved and reconfigured. Is that right? Yes. I had no idea. So I don't, anyway, so I guess we're running on it for the last time. So, um Always nice to get a last run on track. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for questioning. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start, okay, back in the back first. Uh, Mark Armijo, the Arizona Republic. Danica, you've been through Danica Mania. Can you probably imagine what Trevor Mania is like for Trevor Bain right now? Uh, I, uh, I saw him last night at a charity event we did at the Biltmore, and um, he's... Uh, I, honestly, he's such a nice kid. He's so down to earth. I mean, he's very into charity and, and things like that. And he doesn't, you know, I tried to talk him into buying something expensive with his prize money, but he wouldn't. He said he doesn't want anything. So apparently I have a lot to learn from a 20-year-old. So I don't know. I don't know if he needs much advice. I think he's got his head on straight. He seems to have good people around him. And, you know, all I said was from my experience, just be your, just continue to be yourself and be, you know, not know where pit lane is or where victory circle is that was cute that was the cutest thing of the whole 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 day is that he didn't know where to go and um you know just to be himself and and um people can relate to that when when you're real at least that's what you know hopefully that's what i've found anyway so uh i don't think he's gonna have any any problems though he's a, he's a good kid he's very articulate and very mature for his age okay we'll come up here to mike <clears throat> and then we'll go to claire mike muller mike muller dot net Good job at Daytona, too. Um, the Las Vegas thing, the $5 million, is that just a gimmick? Is that, how do you feel about that? Uh, well, I, I, I guess the point being is that we're t you just asked me a question about it. So that's kind of the point, is to, to create a story that gets people talking about IndyCar. And um, that's one thing that Randy Bernard has talked about from the very beginning when he came in to, to run the IndyCar series is, is you know, having $20 million to whoever can win the Daytona 500 and the Indy 500. So, you know, that's, it's just something, or I'm sorry, the Coke 600, sorry. And, um, you know, that's, uh, he's just into that kind of thing. It's promotion and, you know, you take out a take out an insurance policy on it, and you know let her rip. If somebody really does it, great. If they don't, you know you spend a little money to get some advertising. So, you know, I mean, it's uh, so yeah. I think it's serving its purpose well. I think what would be a real point of conversation, which will be another good thing for IndyCar, is that what if somebody really does win that five million dollars and. The uh, as I read the you know the winner of the championship walks away with a million bucks and the guy who comes in for one race walks away with five million dollars. I mean, uh, that would be an interesting thing to to happen, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of opinions on that. But again, you'll be talking about IndyCar, and that's what it's trying to do. Okay, we'll go with Claire then Lewis. Claire B. Lang, yeah. Sirius NASCAR Radio. Good job at Daytona. Uh, I had some questions on the air last night about the two car push and your maybe hesitancy to do that. 
Uh, and then I was saying, well, 14 races. Uh, she's only done 14 races. It would be smart not to get involved in that. Can you talk through that just a little bit? Well, it was definitely the you. You definitely had to have a partner and be pushing if you wanted to uh, run at the front all day and really have a chance to win. I mean, I guess you could get pushed and and be in the lead and and it work out maybe for you. But uh, but you've got to be in that position where you're up front all day. That's the safest place to be. And um, you know, I, I'll definitely be practicing it when I go back for the summer race. But I didn't get a chance to practice it and practice. I really didn't. I gave. I gave one car a hit at the end of the back straightaway, and he pulled in, and I thought, shoot, what's going on? Did I, really, did I upset him or something? And, I mean, without a scratch on the front bumper, apparently I didn't. But, you know, it's, uh, it's necessary, and I will be doing it. But it will be a lot nicer to be able to get some practice before it becomes the real deal when, you know, you mess up and you take someone out or, you know, make a mistake and you crash. So uh, that will be something necessary, and I'm plenty comfortable to do it. I would have tried it in the race. I mean, when Clint pushed me, that was great, and I was um, – I'm grateful he did that, but and I was prepared to, to try to try tuning it myself for him. And um, I mean, what I found out even from talking to Trevor last night is that you know it was much more safe to be the pusher than pushed. And uh, you know, I guess I felt a little the opposite, but that's because I hadn't pushed anyone. So you know, um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm happy to do it. I'll, I look forward to doing it, and it's going to be the way to go. And it's going to be like that. Probably you're going to probably need to do that for I don't know the next good few years. I'm sure until the surface loses some grip. So got to get used to it. Lewis, yes. and then we'll come to Jay. Lewis Frank Reuters. Danica, I'm pretty sure you would, you know, wanted a better finish, but you did lead laps. You had, you know, one of your better finishes. What, what do you take away? And is, is this on schedule for you? You know, where you ran, how you ran is, are you where you want to be? You know, relative, where, where, relative to your expectations. Well, I said top 15, so yeah, then I did I did accomplish that, and I can't overlook the fact that I was running further up than that for for some of the race and. Um, it also doesn't stop my uh, stop my competitiveness and wanting to achieve those better things. And um, Daytona is definitely a place to do it. It's a you know you're running flat out and it's you know you're not dealing with the elements of the car and you know that kind of thing. This is this is challenging. I mean, short tracks are not my strong suit at this point. I mean, the bigger the track, the better for me right now. So um, so it's it's kind of its own little thing. But um, I. I I really felt good at the beginning of the race. I was able to, no matter what happened, I was able to, to, to work my way back up into the top ten pretty quickly for the first sort of half the race. And um, and that felt good, and it almost felt kind of easy. But then as the race went on, it got harder and harder to get up there. And as the race went on, people started working with each other more and more, and I wasn't doing that. And uh, And... <clears throat> so I learned my lesson there that, you know, it's if you want to run up in the top ten and have a chance to win, which you can pretty much win from almost anywhere up there, you know, you need to, you need to be pushing and you need to be up there for the restarts. So, um, I mean, that's what happened when I got to the point where I, Clint was pushing me. I was, I think I started like sixth or something on that restart, and we got going and, you know, got a good start and was up in the with the leaders. So, uh, and then became a leader. So that's that's the way to go. Jay? Uh Jay Hart, Yahoo Sports, um, just sort of back to the $5 million question. Um, have you talked to anybody uh, about that? Particularly, I guess, Sam would be the, I guess, the one guy. That no, but I'm to. definitely putting his name out there. Get him a job. Um, he, uh, I think he'd be great. Would he be the prohibitive favorite, I guess, for that? I don't know. I think, um, I, I think he would. He was always very good on the ovals, and uh, his style, I think, suits kind of the – you know, the short, fast racing of IndyCar, and, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's go, go, go. You don't have to pace yourself really on the mile and a half, so you just keep your foot down, and especially a place like Vegas, I don't know what it's like in an IndyCar because I haven't been there in that car, but I know in a stock car it's got a lot of grip, so I can only imagine that translates to an IndyCar, and, um, but I, I think he would be very good. It's been a few years for him since he's been in an IndyCar, but he's just got that kind of, he's just that kind of personality where he just gets in and goes, and, it might serve him well there, and it obviously served him very well in IndyCar for all the championships he won in the races. So, okay. in the and back, he's got time, you know. I mean, he does. Von Healy with PIR. You're That'd be a good payday if you only did one day's work. That would be a good one. <laughs> uh, Von Healy with PIR. You're referring um, about the race back in November. Are you taking any particulars? Are you taking any particulars from your race experience in November and the track here into this race? Sure. Um, you know, in practice, I, I one of the things I didn't practice that I don't don't think really served me very well very well in the race was, 
you know, I, I spent a lot of the time last year trying to not be loose, and I know now that I need to be that way at the start of a run, and as I'm learning now for the first half of a run before <laughs> it should start to get, get into a push situation. So keeping that in mind and also not using the apron. I used the apron a lot in practice last year because I was told you need to be able to go there in the race, and I thought, well, I better get comfortable getting on that. But really it just kind of just gets some weight transferred to the right rear of the car and gets it to turn. And so, you know, you kind of, in an Indy car, you've got weight jackers and uh, front and rear roll bars, and you've got stuff to change that, that you can have a perfect car in practice and, and basically keep it perfect in the race almost just with your cockpit adjustments, where in a stock car you have to plan ahead as in, you know, I arc the I arc the entry a lot because of my experience in open wheel cars, and that's something that you know serves you well if you want to get the car to turn. But you know what? You got to protect the bottom, and you got to you know you got to be free enough that through the middle of the corner that you kind of almost have to shallow up the entry so that it doesn't step out on you. So between that and the apron and things like that, you need to leave those tools for the race and not use them in practice. So I, I started off the race far too tight last year, and. Um, we're still fighting tight right now, but we know it instead of thinking, oh, it's, it's not too bad. You know, we need to, I know when I need to chase it. I know I need to feel uncomfortable out there at, right now. Okay, we'll go here. Brian Nelson, Motor Racing Network. Danica, um, with all the Danica mania that, that there was referred to earlier and the heightened expectations and, and so on and so forth, how do you, how do you deal with the, the outside pressure and, and, and try to, the pressure to perform and, and to succeed. How do you deal with that and try to focus on what you know you need to do and set all that distraction aside? You just have to do your best to, uh, you have to just do your best to kind of not read a lot and <laughs> not listen to a lot. You know, I just keep my head down with my crew chief and with my mechanics and with the people nearest to me. And then, um, you know, I have my own personal goals, and I know based on how a weekend starts, if, if I'm having a good weekend as it goes through, if I'm learning and growing and getting better, I can tell I don't need to hear it from somebody that you're doing better, and I definitely don't want to hear it if I'm not doing better. So, you know, just kind of keeping my head down and not really worrying about what people say or think and, and just um, kind of setting little achievement goals along the way with what I want to do and what lap times I want to get to. Uh, and then if I do it, then I, then I feel good and I'm having a good day no matter what anybody says. Okay, we'll go back to Mike. Mike Muller, MikeMuller.net. You're going to Bristol. Do you know Bristol? You know what state it's in now, I guess. Though sometimes I don't know what state it's in when you cross the borders over there. What do you think about Bristol and are you going to try and test something there, a k and car or whatever? Well, I've been to Bristol, Connecticut far more, so you just never know, you know. Um, I... Uh, um, for me, I it's going to be a it's just going to be a new situation. You know, I'm going to have to deal with it. I'm going to have to keep my expectations in check, and um, you know, I, I I'm just going to have to be smart. You know, it's just I don't know what to do. You know, there's it, there's nothing like you can't replicate an exact track. So um, it's just you know, it's going to be like last year, just new experiences along the way. There's less of them this year than last year, but. Um, there's nothing I can do except take it in and listen and be patient and keep my expectations um, to, a, to a reasonable point. All right. Thank you, Danica. Good luck Thank tomorrow. You.